everybody, this is day 10 of Commit, 30 days of yoga. Today's practice is all about stretching the legs, releasing tension, increasing flexibility, and feeling good. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and stick around to the end where we break down a pose from today's practice. Begin standing feet hip width apart, hands off the body. We're going to start with some toe raises. Lift the toes up as high as you can, and lower. Lift and lower three more times. Walk out the heels, alternating sides, stretching the ankles, arches, and toes. to ankle rotations, being careful if you have a previous injury, one foot then the other. To marches, raising the knees as high as you can bring them, alternating sides. Last one. Coming to a balance, knee to chest on the right side. Get long and strong through the grounded leg. Tighten up the core. Get long through the back and neck. Keep the leg up, but release the hands. Hold for five, four, three, two, and one. Lowering with control. Let's do that on the other side. Knee to chest and hold. Keep the leg up, but release the hands. Hold for five, four, three, two, and one. Lower with control. Pick up the right foot, take the left arm out to the side, and extend to a big toe hold stretch. Release, other side. Pick up the foot, get tall and extend. and release. Step to the front of your mat. Inhale to upward salute. Exhale forward fold, bending the knees as needed. To ragdoll, hug your elbows and allow the upper body to sway a little from side to side.
Lower the hips and raise the chest to a squat. Forward fold. Four more times to squat. And fold. Three more. Squat. And fold. Two more. Squat. And fold. Last one. Squat. And fold. Inhale to a half lift, flat back. Exhale, fold. Inhale to upward salute. Exhale, hands to heart. Take the time to adjust as needed. Step the right foot back about a foot to a foot and a half. Clasp your hands behind you. Get long through the body, lift the chest and fold forward, raising the arms up in an intense side stretch. Engage the legs and return to standing, keeping the hands clasped behind you as you switch your feet, right leg up, left leg back. To an intense side stretch, we get long and then fold, raising the arms up high. Tighten up and return to standing. Step the left foot forward. Inhale to upward salute. Exhale, hands to heart. Step your right leg back to crescent lunge, arms up. Lower the hands to a runner's lunge. Lower the back knee, raise the arms in low lunge. Drop both hands to the inside edge of the front foot. Option to lower to your forearms. Drop the left knee and turn the foot out to the side in lizard pose. Hands to either side of the front foot. Lean the hips back, straightening the front leg to a half split. Keep the hips elevated as you fold over that front leg as much as you can, feeling a stretch all along the back of the leg. You can point the toes forward or up, whichever you prefer, or do both back and forth. Coming forward now to pigeon pose, Get long through the body before folding over that front leg.
Lift the body and raise the back foot up. If you can, twist to the right, grabbing onto the foot and pull it in closer to your hip for a quad stretch. Release the stretch, plant the palms and step back to plank. Lower to your belly and up to cobra or flow through chaturanga, upward facing dog. To downward facing dog. Step the right foot through, coming up to crescent lunge, arms up. Lower the arms to a runner's lunge. Back knee down, raise the arms in low lunge. Lower both hands or forearms to the inside edge of the front foot to lizard pose. Drop the right knee, turning out the foot. To a half split. To pigeon pose, get long before folding forward. Raise the body and lift the left foot up. If you can, twist left and grab the foot, pulling it in gently for a quad stretch. Release and make your way to plank. Flow through, chaturanga, up dog. To downward facing dog. Step or hop your feet to the outside of your hands and lower the hips to garland pose. Palms together, get long through the back, chest lifted, hips open.
Lower to seated with the soles of the feet together in a bound angle position. Stay long through the back as you drive those knees down. Bring the knees together and lean back as you place the right ankle over the left leg in a seated pigeon pose or figure four stretch. Work to open that right hip using your hand to help if you like. Sit up tall and press the upper body closer to the legs to deepen the stretch. Lean back to switch your legs. Place the left over right this time. Open that left side and then lean the upper body forward to deepen the stretch. Unravel the legs, knees together now. Sit up tall. Pick up the right leg at the ankle and extend it up. Straightening it as much as you can. Lower the right foot over to the left side, holding at the ankle, extend. and release. Open the legs to a seated wide angle position, adjusting the hips to deepen the stretch. Hands down ahead of you, lean forward. If you can, you can lower to your forearms or fold all the way down. Releasing the stretch to an easy seated position, hands on your knees or folded in your lap. Take a few deep breaths to finish up. Let's talk about our standing forward fold. Now, in the beginning of our practice, it's going to look a little bit different than at the end of the practice, assuming you've warmed up the back of the legs and the lower back. So in the beginning, we always want to listen to our body, even at the end of the practice, and only do what our body is telling us to do. 
So if we're tight in the back of the legs, and especially in the lower back, we want to make sure we're keeping a nice bend through the knees. So coming into that fold, we can bend the knees as much as we want to to come down, and then start to straighten out the legs a little bit, if that makes it easier for you. And so here, you have options where you want to put your hands, and that's really just your preference. So you can keep your hands down on the mat if you can reach there, or you can hold on to your legs for a little bit more stability. And now my legs are about hip distance apart, but if you feel more comfortable or more stable being shoulder width apart, then you can do that too. So from here, we can straighten out a little bit more if we feel that nice release if we've been holding for a while, and we can use our hands to pull our body into that forward fold. And that feels really good. And what I'm doing here is I'm making sure that I'm getting long through the back. So I'm lengthening out, I'm bringing my ribs as low as I can to the tops of the thighs. Good, so from here we often say to go into ragdoll, hug the elbows and go into ragdoll. And that's a little bit different than that forward fold. In the forward fold, we're focusing on really releasing everything in the back of the legs and in the lower back to deepen that stretch to get into that fold. But with ragdoll, what we want to do is we want to get heavy through the upper body and just kind of allow everything to sway. Now, the reason why we hug our elbows is as you get deeper into that fold, your hands kind of slap into the mat. But if this is where you're at in your fold, you can allow the arms to just hang here and get a nice release through the shoulder girdle. Otherwise, as we're folding down, we're going to hug and we're going to allow the upper body to just hang here. So the goal is not necessarily to come as close to the legs as we can in ragdoll. It's to just find that nice release in the lower back and to keep stretching the muscles along the back of the legs. So once you're here, you can just kind of sway around and allow your upper body to just hang there and get heavy. Good, and you'll find that in doing that, you're lengthening even more through the back of the legs. So that's really nice to do. But if at any time during your practice, you prefer to work that forward fold than to be in ragdoll, you can do that too. So always listen to your body. Now at the end of our practice, let's say you've, you've really, really warmed up the back of the legs and you feel like you can really get deep into that pose. Maybe you want to widen your stance a little bit. And then remember to get long through the front of the body before you get long through the back of the body. So we're lifting here. We're folding from the hips. Okay, kind of all the way down. We're going to bring our ribs as low as we can. And then I'm going to release everything through the back of the body. And if I want to try to get as deep as possible, I can hold on to the back of my legs and really pull. And by widening your stance, that allows your face to come between the legs, whereas here it might stop you from getting even deeper. Now, if you're not there yet, that's perfectly okay. So like I said, keep the knees bent as much as you need to or as much as you want to, but play around with where you're shifting your weight. So notice if you're shifting your weight back, if you're making it easier in the back of the legs, and maybe that's something that you want to do for today's practice or for any practice, if you're finding you're really, really tight here, or if you have any injuries in the back of the legs, or maybe you want to lean forward just a little bit to find that little extra pull in the back of the legs. So always play around. This is a really nice pose that we can move around in. We don't necessarily have to just get into it and hold. We can shimmy, we can work to deepen it, and it's one of those poses that you are gonna see a big improvement from the beginning of the practice to the end of the practice, like I said, if you had that chance to really lengthen and release.